Hi, teammates. This is The Well by Live Well. I'm one of your hosts, Jen Keys, And I'm Megan Donovan. Together, we bring you the educational podcast that guides teammates to better their physical, financial, and personal health and well-being. Welcome to The Well. Welcome, teammates. Megan, we are officially in June, and it's summer. This is my favorite time of year. Hi, Jen. I have to agree. I've been enjoying the weather and all the fun outdoor activities that come along with it. This month, we recognize Men's Health Month. While men's health should be a priority all year long, in June, the goal is to raise awareness for preventable health problems and encourage early detection and treatment of diseases amongst men. With Father's Day this month, I do think it's the perfect time to encourage the men in your life to take care of themselves. We have a guest with us here today to talk all about men's health. Dr. Matt Aston is the medical director of the Live Well Care Clinics at Atrium Health Navicent in Macon, Georgia. He is double board certified in emergency medicine and internal medicine. He also serves as the team physician for both Mercer University Athletics and the Macon Mayhem hockey team. Dr. Aston, welcome to the well. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Again, thanks for joining us today, Dr. Aston. We're here to talk about men's health. And our first question is, why is Men's Health Awareness Month a thing? Well, Men's Health Awareness Month started after there was some research showing that men were living on average about seven years less than women, despite all of the advances in medical technology and research that we've had. Women were visiting the doctor about twice as often as men, which allowed them to detect health problems in their early stages. Significant numbers of male-related health problems, things like prostate cancer, testicular cancer, colon cancer, they could be detected and treated if men's awareness of these problems were more pervasive. Many men were reluctant to visit healthcare providers for regular screening examinations for a variety of reasons. Some of these include fear, lack of information, and cost. Men who are educated about the value of preventative health care can play a major role in prolonging their own lifespan as well as their role as being a productive family member and therefore more likely to participate in health screenings. That's really eye-opening that men were living around seven years less than women. That's pretty that's pretty specific and quite a lot of time, actually. So I, I'm actually glad that there's more awareness around this topic. It, I don't know that I would have thought that this would have been necessarily something that men wouldn't go do. But as we have prepared and we've dig, have dug into this, I have found it very interesting at the approach that men take to their overall health care. And it sounds like from all that you said, education really is the key for men and going ahead and getting those screenings. As we were preparing, we looked at the theme for this year's Men's Health Month, which was teach men and boys how to fish for their health. And I super love that. I think that's really, really neat. I agree, Jen. I like the health and well-being spin on that old adage. The goal of Men's Health Awareness Month is to build the knowledge of men and boys to impact their lifestyle for actionable, healthier choices that influence decisions lifelong. Yeah, I really like how it encompasses men and boys and that boys in particular, right? Teaching multiple age ranges to take responsibility and action around their health and longevity. I have two sons and as they were growing up, we always took them for their annual physicals. But I've even found now that they're adults, I'm constantly encouraging them to continue those annual physicals and seeing their doctor. Megan, you found a statistic about men going to the doctor. Can you talk about that real quick? Yes, I did. I actually found several interesting statistics about men and visiting the doctor. According to the CDC in 2019, women were 33% more likely to visit the doctor than men, and women are 100% better at maintaining screenings and preventive care. Another statistic said that men are 25% less likely to, than women to have visited a doctor within the last year. Also, only 60% of men go to the doctor for yearly routine checkups, and 40% won't go until something is wrong. So, Dr. Aston, why do you suppose men are so resistant to going to the doctor? Well, there, there's many reasons for this. Um, one of the biggest reasons, you know, would be the stigma related to men. Um, They don't want to show weakness. They don't want to admit that something is wrong, so they won't go to the doctor. 
Another thing would be fear. They don't know if something's going wrong, so they are afraid that something major may be happening that will prevent them from continuing to work, provide for their families, or even be there for their families. Some of them even wait to see if there's a significant problem that they feel like they can't handle on their own. Therefore, that's how they go. Oftentimes, it's convenient. So I, I don't I can't take off from my job. I, I have to go do this, so I, I just can't take the time to go to the doctor. Another thing is just unfavorable experiences in the past. If they felt judged by their doctor at a past appointment, they're not going to go back again. Um, there's also some comfort uh, related to this. They might be a little uncomfortable during the appointment, particularly during the exam, certain types of exams. So there are lots of things that feed into why men are resistant to going to the doctor. All of those reasons actually made me sad. Like that, that's, it just makes me think that men are suffering in silence to a, to a certain extent. And it's, well, all those reasons you said actually are super valid, but seemingly unnecessary right it, but from if you're really taking it down what you like like unpacking everything that you said that's a lot for a man to overcome i also found an interesting survey from cleveland clinic back in 2019 that looked at how men will do almost anything to avoid going to the doctor they surveyed over a thousand u.s males over the age of 18 and found that 72 of percent of men would rather do household chores like cleaning the bathroom or mowing the lawn than going to the doctor. And this one was surprising. 77% of men who are married or in a domestic partnership would rather go shopping with their wife or significant other than go to the doctor. That's power. That's a powerful statistic right there. So as we're talking about this, you touched on this a little, but I sort of it makes me think like if we were to dig into the reasons why a little bit more twofold, twofold question. Is it that men's health issues are more complicated and more dangerous than women's health issues? Like, is it just the fact that it's just that scary? Like, you know, maybe they, they just perceive it or maybe they really are more dangerous. Or is it the thought that men are uncomfortable talking about these health issues? We found one article that said that some of the most common health concerns that the doctors hear from men are about urinary functions and sexual function. I can imagine both of those aren't something that men feel comfortable talking about with their doctor. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, there's a lot of, like I said, I mentioned earlier, comfort in relating these things. Men just don't want to talk about these types of things. But one of the things they really need to remember is that men's health issues, often a lot of them are preventable. And there are easy ways to get that done. Like, would you say that going to your doctor's more often helps you build a better relationship with your doctor and then you might be more comfortable talking about some of these less comfortable topics. Absolutely. The more often you are seeing somebody, you, have, you create that relationship with them, you open up more and discuss things. The best example for men would be sitting around a campfire or a bar table or a table with your friends and just telling stories. You know, you're going to talk with your friends more about certain things you're going to be more open with them than a person you only see once every three or four years. Yeah, I think so, that's a great point. Yeah. Yeah, really great point. So going routinely for those appointments helps you feel a little bit more comfortable. We also saw some statistics about how much longer women live than men. And one statistic said that men will die on average five years earlier than women. <clears throat> And they also live more years of bad health and have higher suicide rates. Why do you think there is this gap between the lifespan and how can men work to increase their lifespan and close that gap? So there are lots of things with this. So actually, the overall mortality rate is 41 percent higher in men than women. Eight out of the 10 leading causes of death, such as heart disease, cancer, stroke, diabetes, are higher than in men than they are in women. So what can we do to help this? You know, for men, they need to make prevention a priority. Right? It is the same thing dealing with your car as it is yourself. You get your oil changed. You check your brakes. So you need to get your blood pressure checked. 
You know, it's the same thing. So schedule a yearly checkup. Schedule your routine health screenings with your doctor. Eat healthy, lots of fruits and vegetables, avoiding high calorie items, sugar, fats, and so high sodium foods, getting regular exercise, any kind of physical activity that you can. You want to set an example for others in your life. Think about not only your, your family members, but for everybody around you. If you smoke, quit. If you haven't started smoking, don't. Seek help for depression and mental health. This is something that is really overlooked in men. My my mind is blown. I have to be honest. Like my mind, I, and I, I mean, we obviously we all work together to to prep this episode. But just listening to it and going back through it again, it really hits me in a way that that I don't know even preparing that I was prepared for. So my husband is five years older than me, and knowing that you know he that men die an average of five years earlier than women like that that's really scary I, I know that when we were prepping this I actually went to him and he's he's a pretty healthy guy he does go to the doctor he has his physicals there's some things he could probably do better about but you know for the most part you know it we're not he's not really in this statistic of not going but um well I did talk to him and I was like hey you know we're prepping this men's health podcast and it's pretty eye-opening you know we found that men typically live to about 76 years old while women live to about 81 and I mean I just with him me already being five years older it's it's just quite it's quite the thing to to take in so you know I think part of what our our takeaway here is healthier men live happier longer lives hopefully <laughs> So, you know, I'm sure we'd all like, I know I with, with him and obviously my sons, but, you know, I'm sure we'd all like to see that the average life expectancy for men to move closer to that uh, as women. You mentioned prevention. So here in the Southeast, we really try to make it easy and convenient for men to see a provider, right? Let's talk a little bit about what's special in the Southeast and what we offer. Yeah, so... A lot of men, you have your primary care provider, and if you can see them, that is great. But here in the Southeast, we have what we call our Live Well Care Clinics. So these are on-site clinics that are open to teammates and their families for preventative care, you know, for all of these um, yearly visits and screening processes. Oftentimes, they are right on-site, so... And I can imagine, so we talked a minute ago about feeling comfortable with your provider. So if we, if they go to a live well care clinic, they like the provider, you're, you're a provider in, in our Navicent market, and they feel comfortable, I would assume y'all would be more than willing to have those individuals come back to help with whatever they have going on. Y'all can treat a variety of different, you can entry level treat a variety of different things, right? Absolutely. We, we treat all kinds of acute diseases, but we also do chronic disease management. So if you have diabetes or hypertension, we can manage those things long term. Um, but we can also deal with the uh, you come in with a backache. Um, we can treat that you know, as well. So uh, but from from the beginning to the end of your treatment and your health care, we can be there for it. That's awesome. That is really great. You mentioned earlier in the episode that one of the barriers is convenience. So if you're an employee or a teammate and you're going to a live well care clinic that's on site, it's really super convenient then. And just in general, those live well care clinics are a great resource. They even offer virtual visits for Southeast teammates. So that's another great way to make things nice and convenient. And it's always a good idea to check with your individual insurance plan because many annual wellness exams are covered at 100% along with some screenings and labs. Now, what if someone is feeling fine? Is there a benefit to a man going to the doctor if they don't feel like anything's wrong and they are feeling fine? Well, as in most things in life, being proactive is best. So if you wait until symptoms become painful or they're not getting any better, it may be too late. All right. So by going to seeing your doctor regularly, if nothing is wrong, that's where the screening things come in. A lot of long term preventable disease processes can be picked up before symptoms start. And like anything else, if we can start the treatment earlier, it is better. Not only can we cure things, we can provide better life, uh, quality of life, longer life. So you know, 
don't wait until something is becoming too painful. We should be, as men, meeting with primary care doctors to create a yearly uh, schedule checkup um, that's going to be tailored to my personal and our personal health and lifestyle. You know, it's really easy to push things off when you feel like there's nothing wrong, but issues can still be going on. So let's get ahead of them while we can. Oh, I love that. Let's get ahead of them while I can. That's 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 a great tagline there. In that same Cle Cle Cleveland Clinic survey I mentioned earlier, it notes that 19% of men admitted they go to the doctor so that their significant other or loved one would stop nagging them. <laughs> As a female wife and mother, what is the best way to encourage the men in our life to go to the doctor without nagging them? Uh, yeah, nagging never works. Uh, <laughs> so one of the best ways is to is is all in the way that you frame the discussion. It's not going encouraging them to go to the doctor to check this to make sure they don't have this. You know, it's so that we don't lose you, so that you can help provide for us. Mm -hmm. You know, so one of the strongest things for men is being able to provide for their family. Well, if you frame it in, in the way that by not doing this, you're risking providing for your family, they're more likely to follow through. I love that meeting, meeting people where they are. Really interesting, too, because, Jen, you mentioned, you know, earlier that your husband's five years older and that the average male life expectancy is 76 and female 81, which means the last 10 years of your life potentially would be without your significant other and you'd want them there for all of those that's years right. so oh, that's sad <laughs> oh well this has been an interesting conversation as we bring the episode to a close we ask all of our guests if there's something they'd like to leave our listeners with what would that be so there's a couple things that i really want to make sure we get across number one is for men get screened like we mentioned a lot of these things that Increased mortality and death in men can be prevented. Get screened so that we can catch it early. The other is just go. Go to your doctor. Go exercise. Go outside. Go eat healthy. Go be a good man. Provide for your family. This has been great. Our focus today has been on men's health. But we really want everyone to hear that the best way for both men and women to know what's happening with their health and well-being is to have your annual physical biometric screenings. Go meet with that doctor. This is the most helpful way to detect health issues early, which helps the treatment of most preventable issues, just as Dr. Aston just said. Remember, our individual health is really a family issue, and it can impact everyone around us. Thank you, Dr. Aston, for coming on The Well today. Now, listeners, go talk to your dad, your brother, your son, your husband, your friend, because their health is important. On our next podcast, we will have Katherine Helms with us to give us some exciting news about Carolina Care. Teammates, don't forget to visit The Well page on the Live Well website or connect with us on our Viva Engage community. Our resources are listed at the end of the show, and we will add links to the programs discussed today in the show notes. The Well Podcast is for all teammates. Links to our playlist can be found on the Live Well page on the teammate site. Thanks for listening to The Well today. Be well, stay well, and live well.